Good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody. We're just about to start, and I'll introduce you to Daniel. Stand up, because he's very nice looking. All right. You can see he's my son. <laughs> Daniel's going to give you a, a presentation from his website and uh, all his technology. There is no sound. I say they've just done this place up and they've taken all the sound out of it. So that really helps. But what can you do? I'm sure we'll have a really good morning, Daniel. We've got uh, Tia. Uh, come in. We've got, we've got tea at around about 11.30, tea and coffee, so we'll talk for an hour, we'll have our tea and coffee for about 20 minutes, and then we have about another 45 minutes, depending on how it is going downstairs. We've got a very nice looking boy there from Scunthorpe, he's going to video everything, and if you fancy him, I can get David with him for you, so he seems up for it, all right? So, Guys, I'll introduce you to Daniel. <coughs> Enjoy. Thank you. Thank we you. welcome him. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's a big honor for me to give a speech here. I always tell people on the continent that for me, Doncaster, the whole show, I've never been here in a spring event, but the whole show in autumn, in September, October, is for me, concerning the atmosphere, still number one in the world. Uh, it's like the mecca of the bocce scene. Uh, lots of going on, lots of people, lots of birds, lots of talk from people over the world. And I always enjoy being here. And uh, that's why I'm happy to give a talk uh, here. Um, it will be a different talk to who, who in here had already a talk from me before? Who was already? Only two. Two and a half. Okay. Ah. That, I, I thought half of the people would have been here already once before, so I would bother them if I bring an old presentation. So what you've seen here is brand new. Most of the pictures I'm showing you were taken uh, first day, so two days ago. And uh, a friend of mine, he's good on the computer, he put them together. And uh, with the help of Olivia, I will find the video in the right place. So, but what you see here, some pictures were taken a few months ago at the end of the breeding season. And all the other ones are taken really uh, two days ago. I had a, a, a father with two daughters from Sweden coming and they took a lot of pictures. And I told them, can you put them together? and put them on YouTube, so we have brand new pictures and never, nobody else has seen them before. Okay, uh, first about myself, some heard about, I had some problems, some family problem and, uh, with our daughter, but now she's doing better, she had an accident and um, I wasn't sure whether I can come or not. And uh, I fly into Manchester yesterday and uh, yeah, I'm enjoying now the time up here. Um, my name is Daniel Lütthoff, as some of you will know. I'm 52 years old. I was teaching uh, more than 20 years as a secondary school teacher. And in the last few years, I stopped teaching uh, and I make mainly bocce. I would say 80% is bocce and 20% I'm still working as a substitution teacher. When anyone is ill or accident or whatever, they can call me and I start helping two, three days, and uh, I enjoy that. And the rest of time uh, is, yeah, time for the birds. At the moment, my breeding season stopped, and uh, you will see everything is empty, no more babies, no more eggs, and uh, so it's much, much less work. During the breeding season, I spend every day five, six, seven, eight, sometimes 10 hours when I got visitors in the bird room, and. Yeah, most of the time you have to clean, clean and observe the birds to see whether everything is okay, whether they are in condition, whether the couple have harmony and so on. Um, my other hobbies are uh, traveling all over the world and uh, I like to read and I like to, uh, I'm a part of a literature club where we talk about certain um, new books or old books. And, uh, but breeding budgies I'm making for 40 years. So, uh, when I was young and in the 1994, 
I had the first foray, I was showing my birds in Karlsruhe at a European show and had one bird that was nominated to go for best in show, a Lutino cock. And uh, after that, I had people coming from Europe to visit me. And I was living there in a house together with some friends. And always when they were ringing the bell and I was opening the door, they said, hello, uh, uh, could, we, could we speak to your father? <laughs> we we want to visit Daniel Litov. And I said, no, no, that's, that's me. They were very surprised that I'm that young. People knew the name, but they did not know much about me. And uh, well, I'm not that young anymore, but uh, that's how it started. And uh, yeah, at my first step, I had birds. I had the small one, the pet birds, the colobachis. And uh, the first step was to get youngsters, just to have babies, and I enjoyed it. And the second step afterwards was to create different kind of colors. Uh, a Lutino with a graving, and I did anything. And uh, let's say the next step was um, I got the big ones, the show budgies. I didn't like them at the beginning, and then suddenly I was very impressed by the fact that you can change um, the design of a bird. I'm very much generally interested in design of uh, anything. If you watch that, um, uh, it's money inside. Yes. Oh, you're rich. Yeah. There's a lot of money inside. But I want to say, if you, somebody had to make a design, now we look at that and we think, oh, that's perfect, that's, that's the way it is. Or I take my mobile phone, there was someone who had to make the design, and now the whole world is having that design. And uh, I was always attracted by any kind of designs. I, 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 I'm not interested in cars at all, but I like when there's a new car coming out, I like to see the, the features that they changed, little details. And uh, I realized that you can make the same with budgies. Um, I don't paint them, but I try to um, change them in a way that I think it's beautiful. But uh, let's say from 16 to 30 about, I was all about size. I wanted to get big birds, bigger, bigger, bigger. And I had very big birds. And then in 2004, I was traveling to South, America, uh, South Africa to pet the beer. And I saw there uh, the first really big budgies with long tails. And I brought some of those from that family uh, into my start. And uh, yeah, my birds were getting bigger. They were already big frame before, but from South Africa, I got this extra length in feather in. And uh, yeah, I was famous to have the biggest birds in the world, but uh, um, how shall I say, nature makes you a certain limit. And uh, when I was in 2010, I, my daughter was born in 2005. And in 2010 or 11, I'm not sure anymore, my daughter asked me, Daddy, why your birds can't fly properly? And because we were visiting a friend of mine and he gets all the rubbish birds of mine, he just keeps them in a flight and they fly around. And he said, why, Daddy, that's much more beautiful. They are able to fly and your birds can't fly like this. And I was thinking, um, um, she had right <laughs> to make it quick. I think we should not forget that we breed budgies and not chicken. And if I see a flight where 90% of the birds are on the floor, I think uh, it's not good. Uh, that's my personal opinion. As I told you before, at the beginning I thought big is beautiful, and now I change the, um, uh, the, the look of my birds. I look a lot. I will show you a few examples how my birds are looking nowadays. Okay, I, I, I want to make a mixture of text and videos. Um, I, tried, I made a big effort to get uh, a sound, a tone on the videos, but we have a technical problem, so that doesn't work. I show you, um, that's the... Well, that's the city where I live. There's a train connection, a train station next to our house. Mm. 
it's in the countryside. It's 20 minutes from Zurich airport and 25 minutes from Zurich downtown. And that's the city where I, it's a little village where I also grew up. That's the hotel where I put in people that are visiting me. That's also 250 meters away. That's our house. We made solar panels on. That's the bird room. It's a big bird room. It's a house. <laughs> now we jump a little bit. That's Charlie, our dog. And finally, we are ready to come inside the bird room. Sorry. Well, you, you should sit over there, you see. I got 90 breeding boxes upstairs. That's the baby flight. There they spent the first 12 weeks. Temperature is always in winter time around 15 degrees. That's downstairs. There are another 16 cages and uh, yeah, a big flight. Um, yeah, these are mainly youngsters, 2010, uh, 2021, 2022 run. Okay, to see the birds, we can have a look afterwards. Uh, that bird, you see a picture of him taken yesterday. He was a baby bird here. These, all those pictures were taken uh, end of February. And so many of those birds you will see later again and you see how they changed. Okay, but I want to stop here. Um, I prepare a few things to talk about. Um, we'll see how far we will get. And if anyone has a question, hang up, uh, put, off your ha put on your hand, and I will try to um, um, answer it. Yeah, I'm, I'm used to talk from the school. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be doing the slippery. Um, so, next point is my ideal budgie. Can you go to the other video? Uh, as I already told before, I think I changed the uh, birds a lot in the last few years. And uh, I think some people say my birds are not as good anymore as they used to be. That's fine. I will... Uh, um, let me see. I think it's... Is it that one? No, let's go back. Uh, oh, 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 so many, wait. Uh, which one is it? No, not this one either. As I told you, I'm a little bit confused. Okay, yeah. Um, that was the European show winner uh, from 2017. That's the style of bird I like now, mostly. Um, I paired them together, but they had no clear eggs, so I changed the couple. But, uh, you know, the short feathered here, and this always with the directional feathering and uh, a deep mask. She has not perfect round spots. He has nice spots. That's a key bird of mine, a golden face opaline. Um, um, 
You see, I don't like when the feather is too open. I like to have a blow, but uh, the feather still must stay close. It, I want to see a dense feather. Here in the UK, you see a lot of birds that are extremely blowing, and you can see from the, f from the side, you can see through the feathers. I, I like to see a certain blow, but not too much. And uh, again, you have to see the... He has already, you see, the feathers are on the limit. Here, I like to see them completely on the body. That's the limit. Ten years ago, the feathers of my birds were much longer. You see, that's for me at the moment one of my best birds. Good size, he flies perfectly. You see, the feather is completely on the body. Good shoulder, good back school, a blow, but the feather is still closed. And from him, as I told you before, with the dark green hen, he had clear eggs, but with a yellow face spangle hen, we see the couple afterwards, I bred some very, very good chicks. Some chicks were not that good, but a few, as at least one son is at least as good as he is. Good, that was uh, an idea about the birds I like to see. Um, that's another uh, cock. Uh, that is breeding well, that's an old one. Um, let me see, my ideal bocce. As I told you, for me, uh, I was looking yesterday for some outcross, and for me it's very, very important to see whether a bird is flying. Uh, I think, I don't know how it's in your start, there are just a few people I know or where I, I know the bird from. By the way, I want to mention Leopold Gempel, he came all around, he's an old friend of mine, he came all around from Austria. I guess beside me he's the only uh, maker, that's Leopold. <laughs> he came from a long way from Austria to come here. Um, the birds I used to have were too heavy and also the fertility went down. And uh, I knew I have to change something and uh, I think low fertility and not being able to fly is somehow linked. And I think our focus is much too much on the, on the size, on the face. And uh, I'm very happy that there are events like this. Um, more, and me, more and more people are thinking that there's no need to make shows or there's no need to make events. You can do everything online. And I act absolutely against that kind of uh, uh, idea because I think it's very important, the social thing. We, we, you meet each other, you have contact. I think that's an important part of our hobby. And um, the other thing is, on the internet, anyone can put a picture on. Many people take the picture with the camera like this and you see a face like this, but you don't see how beautiful the whole bird is, or whether... That's my other You You don't see whether bird has... Uh, also here, you cannot see, is this bird complete, or is he have no tail, is it a long tail, or the wings crossed, you don't see anything. If you go to a show bench and you have a good um, judge, he can penal make penal penalties, penalties, any fault. And in the internet, there's no regulation. And uh, you, you take a picture of the face and 100 or 200 people will write, super, super, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. But uh, I think it's always about the whole bird, about the whole the bird as a, as a, as a unit. And uh, we should, I think we went far over the top and uh, that's another point I want to talk about. And uh, I, I spoke with a friend of mine to, about this issue and he said, don't say anything about it. But I think for me it's important that I can tell my opinion about artificial insemination. Uh, I don't know how it's going here. I know that in Belgium and Holland it's 
it became very popular to do it and I think it's completely the wrong direction. Um, I want to show you a few pictures of mating birds and uh, I think I'm very happy when I see my birds uh, mating together or when I see in a bird room a, a pair, a cock with a hen and if, I, if they don't have the same thoughts, let's say both have tickets or both have a missing tail or whatever, I would never multiply two birds together that have the same thought because you multiply also the bad feature. But if anything is okay, uh, he was, that's a love pairing, he's together with a cinnamon spangle hen and a cinnamon cock with a cinnamon spangle hen produce um, cinnamons, nothing else. And um, I, I prefer normal spangles to cinnamon spangles and I don't think that because of cinnamons you lose the markings on the spangles, but uh, uh, I always try to mix cinnamon with a normal bird. And uh, of course you have to control cinnamons, but um, Fred Wright told me to talk about cinnamon, uh, what I think about cinnamon, and you must know more than half of my birds are cinnamons. And uh, you have to keep it under control, but all my show winners at the European shows, they were all either cinnamons or split cinnamons, all of them. And the same with opalines, all, the, all those birds are split opaline. So uh, yesterday I was visiting um, Joe McGovern and Ian Angley. Are they here? No? <laughs> uh, and I was surprised they had, both of them had no cinnamon opalines, or almost, maybe three or five or ten, I don't know, with a few hundred birds. And I think it's very important to have cinnamons and opalines and cinnamon opalines in your start. Almost half of the hens I'm breeding with are cinnamon opalines. And I think somehow, at least in my start, certain features are connected with color. I have a very strong family with cinnamon yellow face and uh, the cinnamon opalines family are always the family that have this direction feathering, mostly. I remember when I, I don't know, in the early 20s, I was breeding a cinnamon opaline gray green hen. She was a key bird of mine. She was breeding six years. She wasn't big, but she had this feather. And that's what makes the bird look different. When I started with birds, the feather went like this. And then the birds from Joe Manus, they went like this. And I tried to make the angle from here to get down, you know. And uh, that, I think it's more beautiful. I don't think it's helpful for the birds in any way, but it's, uh, it makes the bird look nicer. But of course, you have always looked at the, the, the eye of the birds is free. And um, when, my, when the feathers of my birds were too long, I had also a uh, problem with the eyes of the birds. And of course, that's the wrong direction if a bird cannot see properly anymore. And um, someone told me I should talk about, about artificial insemination. I will talk later again. Um, they, I always get asked, how do I fix, or how did I fix this feature? The, Joel Bings called it buffalo feathers, buffalo direction feathering. Um, well, it's like if you want to fix any feature in your bird, uh, let's say big, big round spots, and uh, you try to get birds with that feature, you breed them together and you will have uh, from 10 pairs, maybe you get 80 youngsters at the end of the season. And if you keep 20% um, of them with the biggest spots and go on with them, and you do the same the year after the year after. After five years, you will see you have a stud of birds with big spots, so you can fix a feature. And uh, that's more or less what I did. Whenever I saw a bird that has that feature, I tried to buy him, no matter how it looks like. And um, uh, if you always continue breeding with birds that have this feature, you can fix it. And uh, yeah, I'm doing that now for almost 30 years, and I think now it's more or less, no, I know it's more or less fixed in my birds. That doesn't have, all the birds look like this. I got, uh, from that pair, I bred some super birds and some birds very poor. And 
they still can reproduce that face, but of course the ones with the big face, they rather produce birds with big face anymore. But uh, it's, breeding bocce has lots to do with mathematics, because I was teaching mathematics for a long time, and uh, there are certain rules, and uh, in breeding bocce those rules work. It's always about uh, Wahrscheinlichkeit. Uh, Leopold, what's Wahrscheinlichkeit? Possibility. You know, if you, I don't know the English word, I wanted to. Prob probability. Probability, exactly, thank you. It's all about probability uh, in breeding bocce. And um, you can, you are the boss in the, in the start and you give the direction. And they are, the way you put the pairs together is important and the way um, you make the selection. These are the two most important parts of it. And if you always keep birds that cannot fly, they are big, but they cannot fly. After a few years, that's what I did. I had huge birds, but they couldn't fly properly anymore. And that did not make me happy anymore. And uh, I think uh, also on the show bench, a, a bird that is winning must be in shape. I want to show again what I like. Here, no feathers going above the... the the feet, and I want to see the, the tail, uh, the wings in that position, not like this. And uh, at the back, I don't like the back of the, of the bird that is like this. I like to see a S a little bit. I, uh, I cannot <laughs> show it, but I like to see a, a certain round. In the ideal bocce, it must be um, straight, but I, I like to see a little bit uh, it's your turn. Good job we got it in here. Yeah. After how, after how many mo minutes the, it takes off? Ten. Ten, okay. I should not talk that much and show you a few more pictures. <laughs> I speak a few minutes. Uh, here you see a few breeding pairs. I like to have trees in the, these are hazelnut trees and willow trees in, the, in every cage and also of course in the flight. You see the S, I want to show you that good back school and wide shoulder. This bird was never on the show but I like him a lot, always something, he's complete, he has wings and tails, everything. That's a big boy, too big, over the top. That's the daughter of him, and he was, I hope you can see the, the hen he was paired to. That's the... Oh, that's the bird that was paired to that dark green hen. And uh, visually they were, you see that's a dark green hen you've seen before. Visually it was one of my best pairs, but uh, the chicks were disappointing. It's, uh, I, will, I, I just had a few ones and then uh, the hen died on fertile eggs. She's not alive anymore, I don't know, heart attack. And if you see the pair you think, wow, super, super. But if you see the chicks, uh, that's, that's, that's a youngster of them. He looks better here than he is quite small. You cannot see that, <laughs> but he's actually quite small. And the other chicks were even less. He's the best one from that pair. That's now the cock you've seen before, and that was one of my best breeding pairs, box 14. Um, yeah, that was a love couple. I don't like to put gray to gray. But uh, as I told you, whenever I see a love couple in the flight and they have no, they're not too close related, not cousins or whatever, I, I use them. And yeah, you get double factor grace, what I try to avoid, but uh, yeah. That's a cinnamon spangle cock, a very young bird, late 2021 wrong. And uh, he also, you see, that, that kind of feather, um, she, she's too big. 
but also a love couple. Oh. <laughs> he flies like a colibri. You see very short feather, very close to the uh, body. And again, that face, and, and I like to see the beak close. And that's another bird I like a lot. Uh, it's a young cinnamon grey-green. Uh, I want to go to the show with him. And uh, you see the capping, very dense feather, but playing, and here again, going around. That's a... Uh, that's, uh, a new mutation I'm working with, um, Melanistic Spangle. In the UK they are not popular, but I think they're very interesting. I like them. Often the, the markings are too dark. I'm not sure yet whether it's really your own mutation or whether it's just a dark marked Spangle. But I want to try to mix the Melanistic Spangle into my normal Spangles, to get Spangles with uh, good markings again. In the UK, I, in Doncaster, there were always good spangle classes, but uh, the markings, spots and markings on the wings are quite weak. They, uh, I think that's a general problem in, um, in the UK. They, at least what I saw, uh, well, not just in the UK, all over the world, spangles did lose uh, the markings. And uh, I think it's also helpful if you have, I, if you, afterwards you'll see some birds with fleckies. And uh, when I was young, I was told, a flecked bird, you have to get rid of it. It's no good. But I think that's, that's wrong. A flecked bird is a bird with too much melanin, but it can be very useful. I would say all my flecked birds are feather perfect. I don't think I have any flecked birds or birds with tickets that has a... Um, a missing tail or missing uh, wing feather. I don't know whether it's a coincidence, but I think the, 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 the flecked birds, think about your own birds. I think flecked birds somehow have better feather structure. They have uh, less problem with feather problem, uh, less issue with feather problems. And um, a flecked bird, I use them either to go into the red eyes, albinos or lutinos, or I also use them for, um, for the markings of the spangles. And uh, I'm slowly getting spangles with good markings again, because in the background you have um, those um, flecked birds. And of course, you don't, you don't want to have too many flecked birds, but you get, when you put a flecked bird with a spangle with uh, poor markings, you got a certain amount of birds with poor markings and flecked, no good, you get rid of them. And some have good markings and flecked, maybe you keep, maybe you sell them. And a certain amount of the birds, they will get clean head and good markings. And that's the one that I continue with. So with a certain amount of birds, I was asking for a flip chart to write it down. To, it's a Fred Mengenlehre in English, Mengenlehre. No, not probability. Uh, well, you, you, you have this feature, that's a certain... Percentage. Uh, that's a certain... Say again? I don't know. Well, I try to... Um, I don't know whether you can see it from far away. I try... Okay, this here is bird number one. He has certain features, and that's his gene pool, okay? And uh, that's bird number two. Mm. Ah, doesn't work. Very primitive. So, that's... Bird number two, he also has a certain gene pool and certain features. And you get a certain amount of birds that have the features from that bird and the feature from that bird. And they are, that's in between here. And that's the bird I keep for myself to continue. 
Would you go close to get that feature though, Daniel? Would you go uh, close in the family to get that, or, or do they have to be out, out sort of? That was an aspect I wanted to talk about afterwards. Uh, if you want to fix any feature, and, and you use, let's say, brother to sister, father to daughter, mother to son, and grandfather to grandchildren, and so on, you can fix it very quickly. But I think, I, I, I used to do that. I had a super spangle and a dilute family. I was getting, as a young guy, two dilute cocks, and they, they were old, but they both bred for me, and uh, I put them on different hands, and then I put the youngsters back to the to the other uh, cock, and that was the whole, all the dilutes I had then, I had about 30, 40 dilutes or split birds. They were all going back to two birds, and the two birds were brothers. And after, I think, in the fifth or sixth years, uh, it, was, it was finished. And uh, all the chicks were dead in shell, and it did not work. And I came too close related. And that was, for me, an important lesson to learn. I think if you breed half-sisters, Ralf Jenner is a friend of mine. He goes, he makes very close um, pairings, and it seems to work for him. I like to go the, I always stay in family, but far away. I, when I pair up my birds, uh, people always think that I'm studying the breeding records for hours. I don't do that. If I have a cinnamon cock with a normal hen, they have, they are going in the flight and I like them, I use them because I know he's not the father. A cinnamon cow cannot be the father of that hen. And uh, I would not recommend my experience with inline breeding to fix a certain feature at the beginning can be helpful. But uh, as I told before, you always multiply the good features, but you also multiply the bad features. And if a bird that is too close bred has a diary, anything. Normally I just clean that a little bit and uh, uh, give the bird back in the flight and he will save him himself and uh, help himself and it's done. And if you have a bird that is from a breeding combination that is too close, already a diary or flu or anything can be a serious health problem for him. So I would not recommend. Okay. I, I think I've spoken almost 10 minutes again, so let's see what's in the next video. Ah, these are, that's a, a pair I bred already with. Just to show whenever... On the limit. That's for me a perfect breeding hen. Good hen, but flecked but useful. He will be part of my show team. There are three young yellow face greys. Um, they fly perfectly. Also that's, that's not a big bird. Just starts molting. These are all baby birds 2022 wrong. No, that one not. That's a split recessive, that one. I wouldn't pair them together. They're too close, not too close, too big. Big hen, but short feathers on the perch. That's a golden face hen, cinnamon golden face hen. Baby opaline, cinnamon opaline. That's a split Lutino. As you can see, I have big puffy birds and also small tiny birds. Well, you don't see them so much on the video. These were videos taken from the, from the Swedish guy. And of course, it's always the big birds that take the attraction. Uh, that's a, another one of those young baby Yellow face? No, wait, that's a hen. That's, that's a big hen. But I think it's important to have different styles of bird in a bird room. Um, again, you see that face, she's flecked. She will go into a Lutino cock for sure, that hen, if she's happy with.
But I would never sell, well, I sell birds like this, but I wouldn't sell a bird just because it's flecked. Dense feather. Uh, yes, and I, I want to try to breed in the next two, three years. I want to pair, I want to breed opalines. Um, I think, I don't know why, but rep opalines have quite a bad reputation. And uh, if anyone is at my place and wants to buy this cock, and I say, maybe, I have to check the pedigree, and I say, oh, uh, he split opaline. Then often the people say, oh, no, 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 no opaline, no opaline. And I think, well, you don't know how to breed budgie. Because uh, an opaline, you must handle them. If you don't look, uh, you will end up with a start full of opaline. And, uh, but I think uh, big spots are linked to opaline. And the talk is that um, uh, fleckies are linked to opaline. I don't think it's wrong, but it's not necessarily like this. And I think if you breed opalines to opalines, you get the, the, the V uh, the, on the back. Uh, how do you say V? Yeah. And I, say, I think opalines can be very beautiful. I also always uh, uh, try to avoid them. And I think the problem is that most people pair normals into opalines, normals into opalines. And you get, with a certain time, you get the opalism here. I think that's why they have a little bit the bad reputation. But I think uh, they can be very useful birds and also beautiful. I think a beautiful, well-marked uh, opaline is wonderful. Is that enough? Anything else? Typical hen, I have lots like them with the, it's a split dilute, a young spangle hen, little bit markings, could be better. That's a melanistic spangle baby. Violet yellow face, flecked hen, she goes into a spangle. That's a, a that was a dilute cinnamon, uh, not dilute, uh, clearing. I like recessive, that's a recessive, that's a split recessive. So those pictures were all taken two days ago. That, that hen was winning the Swiss baby show, Seva show. No, best youngster, not baby, youngster. That's a split recessive again. That's a split, that's the, the baby from before. He's a split albino. His father was a Lutino cock. It was a love couple. The mother was a violet gray. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to have him. Also, if the color is not ideal. Big lady, yellow face. Some tickets, but yeah, on the limit. She will go into with a short feathered cock. That's a split dilute. That's one of my favorite birds. He's not in condition here, but see the feathers. You can imagine how he looks like when he's in condition. You see, it's... And, uh, yeah, I mean... Many people are 
when you see the pictures on Facebook, they all have this face, and that's why people always put down the feathers, and then put the birds in and take a picture, and then, ooh, it looks like this. But when you see the birds in the real, uh, yeah, it's something else. And uh, I did not make this with all the birds before I took a picture. They, that's the way they, they look in real. And that's, as told before, I think it's very important to have shows, to have judges that can um, give directions and give penalty if something is wrong. Okay, I wanted to talk about, I forgot to talk about artificial insemination before. That was an issue that someone told me not to talk about. Do we have time or do we have... No, it's a big, big subject. Uh, yeah, it's a big subject, but I want to make it uh, very short. Um, um, how shall I say? If we breed a, cre a creature that is not able to breed naturally anymore, I think we make something wrong Absolutely. to make it short. And uh, I have some friends that are doing that and they are convinced to do something good. And uh, they said, I, well, when I, uh, two, the, two years ago, the cinnamon gray green of mine was certainly one of the best birds. He was winning twice the European Championship, plus he was winning in Budapest uh, the, the, the WBO show. And I showed him only three times, and three times he was best in show. And I knew whenever I would bring him to a show, he would have won all the time. Because he was a top bird, and he was very relaxed, and he was the whole year in breeding condition. Always, you didn't know, he was always looking nice. But when he was breeding, he always had chicks to feed for himself. And people were surprised that I let him feed. And uh, he said, oh, you should take the chicks away and uh, give another hand. And I think I leave all my breeding pairs, well, if they don't feed properly or anything goes wrong, I take the chicks away. But when everything goes all right, I always leave the chicks with the parents. And I think you make your, your birds mad. Imagine, uh, are there any ladies in here? One, not too many, two. And imagine you have a child and always after birth, the child is taken away. I think it's against nature and it doesn't make sense. And they are happy to feed their chicks. Sometimes they're killing them afterwards, that's, <laughs> but that's something else. But in general, 99% they are happy to feed and raise their own chicks. And I think if we, we take them away and give them to foster, it's against nature. And it's again the same with artificial insemination. It's, uh, uh, it's not a big issue. I've seen that many times. I, uh, it's not a big thing to do, but um, why should you do that? Um, there's a certain limit from nature. And many birds I've seen on Facebook, I'm sure um, they are, I mean, also in Turkey, in Pakistan. Um, I sold some years ago a bird to, to um, Brazil and uh, to Renato Ochoa, and he came two years later to me with his breeding records and said, look, Daniel, um, he bred from one cock of mine 127, 20, 128 or nine chicks, and he was a double factor gray. That's why he knew that so clearly. And he was very <coughs> proud. He said, oh, your bird was so um, uh, fertile and full of sperms, and he took them all over the place, and he made a fortune to sell the birds in Brazil, and that, that makes sense for him in a financial way. But if you have a start with 40 boxes and you breed from one bird 30 chicks, I think it doesn't make sense to have 30 chicks from a bird. I, key, I always breed, let's say, probably 10 chicks, <coughs> and then I sell the adult and go on with the young ones. In, in England, I know it's... Uh, I tried to buy yesterday some old cocks, 2019 cocks, going to the fourth years, and uh, they said, oh, no, they need to keep them. I would, I would sell them because the, 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 the power is always in the young birds. And again, back to the artificial insemination, there's a limit from the nature, and if a bird is not able to mate naturally anymore, I think he shouldn't be used for breeding. It's something else if a bird has a broken, um, a broken um, leg and uh, he just sits like this on the perch and uh, sometimes they're still able to mate in the, in, the, in the nest box or on the floor. But that's something else. But if a bird is simply too heavy 
and is not able to jump from, from here to here or to fly from here to here, then I think this bird should not be used. Also, if he's very fertile, he has a lot of sperms, but what do you get from a bird that is not able to mate himself? You get more birds that are not able to breed themselves. And I think, that's my opinion, uh, there's a limit from nature, and if we do it artificially, we are going over the limit. And uh, at the end of the day, I think it's, it's one step backwards. And I'm sure also those thoughts that I know that uh, make that, that are working with artificial insemination and uh, they also work with foster pairs. Who is using, I don't ask here who is who is using artificial insemination because nobody will put your hand up, but I'm not sure whether everybody would say the truth. But I ask who is using foster pairs? No one? Everybody. One? Everybody. Everyone, okay. Okay, I think a lot. I was, when I was a young guy, I was told you have to do that. I, I, I don't do it. As I told you before, also my very best hens and my very best cocks, they are feeding. And if they don't feed properly, I take the chicks away. No matter whether they are good or not. But if the chicks are growing, I leave them, I make two rounds, maybe I let the hen lay in a third round and then I stop for a few months. Their hens, they would lay six, seven, eight, nine rounds, I know. But I, I stop after three rounds. Uh, some hens are, are tired after one round. But again, if you use artific artificial insemination, you should think, what do I do? And what do I do it for? Is it for financial interest to get as much chicks from a cock and I can sell them? Because from, uh, from a point of view concerning getting quality in your start, I think it doesn't make sense, as I told before, to get so many youngsters. Because every bird has good features and every bird has bad features, but it doesn't make sense to have in your start from one bird um, too many youngsters. Because very quick, as I told at the beginning, you, you will get uh, problems with fertility and uh, I think in general the, the, the way on artificial insemination is a little bit a dead road. Do you say that in English, this expression, a dead road? A dead, uh, Okay, uh, I can feel some people are getting nervous. We are over the time. Let's make. You sure? Well, I want to drink and I show you a few more pictures. Very important, fresh water. They're loving it, and they love to take a bath in here. I wasn't able to take a picture of birds taking a bath, a new one, but in general, in the morning when you give water, they all go in there, they all shit together, and you have to clean the water quickly, because it's getting dirty and it's dangerous if they are, but birds should have the possibility to take a bath. Many breeders don't only have the bottle, and then they have no chance, and they are loving, they are loving taking a bath. And already at that stage, these are all young birds. When I see a young cock feeding a young hen, I try to keep that in my memory or I take a note. When I was young, or I could keep everything in my mind. Now it doesn't work anymore. But I take a note, this cock, from I know about where he's come from. I don't know the ring numbers of my birds, but I know where that bird is coming from. I take a note and uh, I try to put those birds together a few months later when they're old enough. That's a cinnamon dilute hen, recessive pied. I like to play with all varieties, not with all. I don't like fallows, I don't like crests. In crests there's no system in it. Mathematic rules doesn't work with crests. But most common um, um, colors I'm reading. Is there any question? Otherwise, I would say let's make a break. <laughs>